Hi, I'm Dr Alex Lord and I manage a microscope facility in the medical school at Newcastle University. I'm also a member of the Cell Detectives. What do you do at your work? Well, some of you might have seen the Cell Detectives last summer when we came into the Life Science Centre. We brought with us a number of our microscopes that we use at the university. But actually, many of the microscopes that I look after are quite big and expensive. This one, for example, costs around about half a million pounds. So the university employ people like myself and my colleagues to look after these microscopes and importantly make sure they don't get broken. We also work with um, researchers, doctors and medics to look at their samples that they bring in through the facility. What do you look at, what do you use your microscopes to look at? Well because the medical school is attached to the hospital we get a lot of human and biological samples coming through the facility but we also we look at things like microbes, bacteria, uh, plants, um, rocks and even uh, metals. What are the smallest things you can see with a microscope? Well the smallest things you can see with the human eye are around about the thickness of a human hair. That's around about a hundred micrometres or ten times smaller than a millimetre. This is a picture taken with one of our microscopes in the facility. It shows a number of cells here. The size of one of these cells is around about 30 to 40 micrometers. So if we stack 10 or 20 of them on top of each other, we get to about the size of a human hair. The country is in lockdown and the university is closed. So what work are you doing now? Well, actually the university isn't closed. Although myself and my colleagues are working from home at the moment, many of us are still doing research. In fact, in, back in the medical school, a number of research groups are looking at the COVID-19 virus itself and are hoping to come up with a cure or understand how it works. In fact, a number of these researchers are using microscopes in the facility. But what are you doing on the computer every day? Yeah, I'm being kept quite busy actually. I um, have a number of meetings with colleagues in the university and also microscopists around the world. As I said, I'm also helping researchers analyse their work and plan experiments when the university reopens. But it's been almost six weeks now since I actually looked down a microscope, so I'm itching to do some microscopy. Um, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to build together a microscope made from Lego and other items that you might have littered around the kitchen. So I've got some things with me here. We have some Lego and we have some cling film and our lens is going to be formed from a droplet of water. First off, you're going to need a base plate. Something like this should be good enough. If you've got smaller or bigger bits of Lego that are flat, then that will be fine as well. We're going to need some Lego bits like this, preferably white if possible. These are going to form our stage of our microscope. We're going to need to build the body of the microscope. This can be done through these type of Lego bits, this being a 4x2, or a 6x2, or a 2x2. Two two. They're the thick types of Lego bricks. Yeah. You're also going to need something long and thin, preferably something like this, to move your sample around. Okay, we're going to need some water, this will form our lens and a device to drop our water onto the cling film. Um, I'm using a little dropper like this, you can also use a teaspoon and we're going to need a piece of cling film no bigger than this. Okay, so let's get building. So first off, let's make our stage. Uh, if you position this centrally, it should be fine. And now we're going to build the body of the microscope around it. I use the smaller Lego bits at the top and the bottom here and along the side I use the bigger Lego bits. Okay, you'll notice here that I'm going to leave a gap to the edge, this edge here. This is where we're going to introduce our samples into the microscope. And I'm going to build up another layer. And I've introduced a hole here, I can just cover that, and build up three layers here. Okay, now comes the tricky part. So I'm going to take my cling film, my cling film, by its very nature, is very clingy. What we're trying to do is to keep it as flat as possible. And we're going to use our Lego here to anchor the cling film in place.
So as you're moving around here, try and pull it as tight as possible. Okay, you can see here that there's been some creases in the center here. We want to try and avoid these. So if this happens, just release one piece of Lego and pull it tighter. Okay, so I've got something like this. There's very few creases in the center now. So the next thing I want to do is to make our water lens. So I draw a bit of water here and I put a, a drop of water in the center here. Hopefully around about that size should be good enough. Okay, the next thing to do is now introduce, introduce our sample into the microscope. Now my sample today is just going to be a piece of paper with some coloured dots on it. Now these coloured dots are made up of even smaller dots and hopefully the water lens will show these. So I'm going to move them into my microscope and use this smaller thinner bit of Lego to push them around. Okay so now I've placed my camera um, lens almost directly above the water lens that we've created. You can see here, as you can see when I move the sample around here, the level of magnification we get. My particular camera phone has got two types of lenses, so I'm going to zoom in twice, and then you can also pinch to zoom to get further magnification. You can see here that these coloured spots are in fact made up of smaller dots as well. You can experiment with the design of your microscope. In this particular case, I've placed a second water lens directly above the first water lens. So our microscope now has two lenses. This forms a compound microscope. Most modern microscopes these days are compound microscopes. You can experiment with the amount of water that you place in your lens and the distance between them. You can also exchange the water for oil. It may give you a different effect. In this particular case, I have two Lego bricks followed by our cling film followed by our water lens that is placed directly above the first lens. To do your job, what skills do you need? Well, because we use microscopes, we all have to have a high attention to detail, especially when cleaning the microscopes itself. Because if there's a small speck of dust or oil on the lens, this can cause a large distortion in the image that you take. Because a lot of our microscopes are driven by computers these days, many of us have to have good IT skills. Actually, if you're good at programming, then you can work in a facility because a lot of the microscopes can be programmed to do automated tasks. Importantly, if you're a scientist, you have to be quite patient because science doesn't always work the first time.